Whiteville, North Carolina, home to nearly 6,000 Southern hospitality field inhabitants. Many businesses continue to thrive in this small town regardless of economic hardships. Fast food chains, grocery stores, gas stations, you name it. But in the shadows of these mega businesses, local individuals such as barbershops and hair salons continue to run as strong as they have when they first started. Take a journey with me as I visit some of Whiteville's very own African-American salons as they provide services for the community, specializing not only in their profession, but their customers. First stop, Jimmy's Barbershop and Beauty Salon. Still standing strong in the exact same location it's been for 21 years, Jimmy's maintains a firm reputation for providing services to all ages, nationalities, and ethnic groups. The welcome signs for everyone. Set up to keep you entertained at all times while you await your service, Jimmy's provide video games, television, and magazines. This environment is nevertheless 100% child friendly. I finally got a chance to talk with owner and operator Jimmy Clarendon to get his insight on the profession and here's what he wanted to share with us. Jimmy's Barber and Beauty Salon, this location's been here 20, 21 years. I've been in the profession for 41 years. As a barber, I kind of always had a passion for cutting hair because I started cutting my brother's hair at home when I was in probably grade school. And then I kind of got into it, got the feel of it, and I, I think I'm going to make a career out of it. So I, upon come finishing high school, I went to Barber College in Durham, North Carolina. Achieving the level of expertise he now possesses was not an easy road. Clarendon shares his experiences. Uh, it was a long process. I just didn't come out of barber school and go to business on my own. When you first come out of barber school, you have to do an apprenticeship. And I did my apprenticeship at Reese's Barbershop under Mr. Asa Reese starting back in 1971. And after I finished apprenticeship there, I uh, continued working there for at least 20 years. But when he passed, my cousin and myself purchased the business from his wife and I worked there a few more years. And then I ventured out on my own and started my own business in 1991. If you've ever had to ask Clarendon if he enjoyed his career and what he does for his customers, you'd better believe that he'll give you his proud answer with a smile. I love cutting the hair and watching the transition, you know, what the head looked like to the finished product. Because it's always, and some heads always a challenge, and you know, they come in looking one way, and they go out looking another way. And when you see they come in, the head all grown out, messed up, and when you finish that, they give them that mirror and the smile, come on the person's face, you know you did a job well done, and you got a satisfied customer. Take care now, all right? See you the next time, okay? Ah, <sighs> such a heartfelt environment has continued to build upon its reputation of being one of the special barbershops in Whiteville, but none of this would be possible without, you guessed it, the beauty salon. That's right. Just a couple steps over from the barbershop will walk you directly into the hands of some of the most talented and skilled beauticians in Whiteville. Sit back and enjoy a little bit of their everyday life. Right here. Did you go? Yes. Friday and Saturday. I'm like a dude because I just had a. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that to me. You're, you're good. <laughs> Basically, it's kind of like a blowout where you shampoo a person here that has no chemicals in it at all, and you blow dry it, and then you start to flat iron it and make it look kind of like a blowout, but it's going to be real straight, straight once you get it Okay. My time is Sharika, and I'm Kim. <laughs> nice to meet you, Kim. Nice to meet you, too. You know how long I've been here, Justin? Sure, sure. She not only loves her career, she loves her customers and the appreciation is displayed thoroughly. Well, what I like most about my job is the people. I'm a people person, so getting to meet people, different people, different aspects of like, you know, when they come in, 
making them what they want to be. You know, they are, all you do is accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. I think that's the biggest point. So, um, you appreciate your customers. Very much. How do you actually give back to them? You know, holidays, discounts. Um, as far as like if they have bereavement, you know, you don't charge for that. As far as, you know, somebody dies or whatever, you try to give them, show them that, you know, okay, I'm aware of your situation. This is what I can do for you. Uh, nine times out of ten, somebody that's going to a function or whatever, they, they're they going to need some type of, everybody going to get their hair done. They're going to buy some, some clothes or whatever. And with my profession, it's as a trade, but it's a profession still, uh, we can give back that way. Um, also, we have like organizations that we do, associations, and then we do like um, Easter baskets. So you have to be able to be stand firm on what you, you know, your profession and be able to tell, come across and have a consultation with the person, tell them exactly what this is, what will work for them, and just stand firm on it and be able to carry that across to them and don't tear it away from it. But it can be very rewarding to you if it's something that you really want to do. Moving on to our next location, I introduce you to Unique Cuts. I'm standing here in front of Whiteville's very own Unique Cuts. Now, most of you may think that a barbershop is just a place where you go get a haircut and leave. But Unique Cuts, it's more personal, more unique. Follow me. If you've ever been to a place outside of your home that makes you feel the same level of comfort, then you've experienced a day at this facility. The employees not only treat you with respect, they treat you like family. Each barber possesses a unique style and persona even though they're trained to do the same job. At any time, or should I say, during business hours, can you come to Unique Cuts for a stylish shave or cut with a side of laughter? Or if you feel the need to shed a tear and vent, you're more than welcome. Whatever's on your mind, you're embraced to share it at Unique Cuts. After having a conversation with owner and operator Bo Shaw, I truly understand why his business remains strong. I was telling my brother that uh, the barbershop is like a, uh, a man's, uh, especially a black man, a black man's paradise, a black man's country club, really. We talk about everything. Everybody in the barbershop is somebody. Everybody got a different types of opinions, and we discuss opinions, we discuss religion, we talk about our wives, <laughs> we, we talk about our jobs, we talk about a boss man, we talk politics. Sometimes we talk sensibly, sometimes it gets heated. But the key thing is, we talk. And when we ever, if people ever stop talking, they ever stop communicating, that's when you start having problems. And you start having division. But uh, one thing about this barbershop is this is a barbershop based really off of Christian principles. So when you come in here, whatever you're talking about, you got to talk about it in a sensible manner. We don't allow cussing and talking negative about uh, women uh, and different people like that. But we do discuss some very serious matters. Uh, like today, we was talking about uh, waiting on uh, being equally yoked and things like that according to what the Bible says about marriage. And we had a big discussion and different people had different ideas. But we all came to the conclusion that the Bible is right. And uh, what we do have our own opinions and we do have our emotions that we have to deal with. Other than religion, what seems to be the trending topic upon men that's not dealing with sports? Motorcycles. As a matter of fact, Bo is currently a part of a motorcycle club which he invites his customers to join them as they take riding journeys. That's just one of the ways he gives back to his customers. To get people to go to church, they think they going to a white church. Hey, whoever everybody, who have everybody get hard with the Bible? We have a whole Harley. We like the we be like the Buffalo Show. Everybody gonna have a Harley.
is it top speed for Harley? It's yeah. like 120. In this barber shop, this is a unique barber shop. That's why I got the name Unique Cuts. Here we we have a we. This is an outreach barber shop. A lot of people call it a, a house of refuge, and that's a good name. You know, uh, we've had young ladies or uh, uh, they come in here. Their lights about to get cut off. They they ain't got got no money. And we take care of. Them. Now that should be be the whole community's job, but for some reason they see something here and they know that we're the type of people that help out. And that's that's what we do. And you can believe that he keeps his word. Bowen employees at Unique Cuts also team up with local sponsors to repay the community with a big meal. They host an annual fish fry in the community of Brookberry of Whiteville. Of course, half of Unique Cuts' success wouldn't be possible without the dedicated employees who put their skills to work every day, keeping customers up to par. I spoke with beginning employee Frank to get his point of view, and similar to the other barbers, he enjoys his line of work. My, um, my dad used to cut hair, but I mean, he didn't ever have his license or whatnot. He just, you know, cut out here and a couple kids in the neighborhood. And um, one day he was on the job. He uh, did long distance work and he couldn't get our haircuts. And I was like, man, I need a haircut. And I just picked up the clippers. I was like, I'm going to cut my own hair. And it started from there. And I started cutting my own hair. I started cutting my little brother hair. Then I started cutting a couple of my homeboys and friends and family hair. And I was like, that was during high school, and I was like, I, I think this is something I like to do. So, um, you know, give it back to the community. We, we like, we, uh, this weekend right here, we have you know, a nice old uh, big fish fry out there at uh, Brookberry Apartments over here in, in our community here. To give back to the community is free. You know, we, we look out. Um, me, personally, what I do, you know, on birthdays, I give out free haircuts on your birthday. Um, if it's deaf in the family, I, I look out for your birthday. I've been here, you know, going on about three years now. I mean, you know, I like barbering, you know, do your designs, techniques, you know, make people happy and whatnot. I've come across various opinions that barbershops are only for men. Sadly mistaken, Unique Cuts also specializes in the beauty industry. Follow me. You're now looking at the leading ladies of Unique Cuts. Various personalities, skill sets, and the passion for what they do bring this team of women together to provide professional beauty to the community. Every customer comes in stressed, but always leaves refreshed. <laughs> Longevity is a priority and nothing new to the professionals in this business. It's simply what drives them. I've been doing here for 20 years, but I started like really before, before I had my license. I was doing here when I was in high school. And, but I had my license for 20, 20 years. 20 years, I've been doing here 20. I love my clients, my clients are my backbone. I can honestly say that. We motivate and we encourage each other. It's like we're there, we can talk and vent our problems to each other and we don't have to worry about them going outside of the chair. After a wash and set, why not let loose of that stress and tension you've gained during your exhausting work week? How and where, you ask? That's right. This beauty salon has its very own masseuse. I'll let her give you the details. Hey, my name is Tracy Pollard. I've been doing massage since 2011. When I have a client, I, um, when I take the phone call, I try to make sure that they are able to receive a massage because there are a lot of contraindications for massage, such as um, diabetes, forms of cancer, you know, um, massage will agitate that. Uh, I actually went with a friend who was taking criminal justice at MoMA at the time. And I noticed they had a massage therapy program and I did um, CNA work for about six years. Basically just have a, a normal conversation with them so they'll be more comfortable with me when I put my hands on them because you always want to be, you know, at a comfort level with your clients. If not, they'll tense up and, you know, it'll be a little harder to do the massage. Then most of my clients actually like this environment a little bit better, I guess. It's more lively and, you know, it's 
always stuff going on, people talking. I guess it has more character than the the other place. Once I started learning about the curriculum and what, what it all involved, I thought I might give it a try and I loved it. Relaxing, huh? Well, don't get too relaxed. We have one more stop. We've sat in on motorcycle debates, community gatherings, and enjoyed the masseuse. Now I'm going to take you in the cut. Welcome to In The Cut, the home of urban southern hospitality combined with lots of comedy and individualism. This is the only barbershop in Whiteville that has its own mini theater and not to mention late hours for those who can't be the early bird. Owner and operator Herman Jr., Nevada, and others blend together to make this shop's charisma stand out. We're the best in town. I ain't gonna anything we eat. We're the best in town. Why, why are you the best in town? Oh, we give the customers what they want. Whatever they want, what you want, D. That's what we give. It's ain't that But no, we the best, man. We, I, we consider, if you don't, hey, look, if you don't consider yourself the best, it's what that's just the way it is. We are, we, we, we kid friendly. And here we talk about everything. So if we need something, we get a little off your head, a lot off your chest. Everything you want to talk about here, we don't gossip. Don't do nothing that mess in. Shut up, we don't teach you. We don't gossip. We don't gossip. But, but you know, we, 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 um, we just like to have fun here, that's all. I don't like to go to a stuck up bottle shop. Yeah, brush cut. Fresh cut. This a warning, this a grain. Okay. Hey, Bob, look, 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 fight me, please. I'm just playing. No. <laughs> I'm just playing, fight me. I'm just playing. Don't y'all come burn the shop up, man. I'm sorry. Man, 25 years. 25 years. Hey, I thank God. I thank God for my daddy because he sent me to Georgia Pacific as soon as I got out of school. So that really made, that so that really, changed your mind quick. Man, that was really fortunate. That really, that really, really, really got me started. Okay. Hard to uh, I'm from Whiteville, North Carolina. Uh, but I've been going for 20 years. I'm here on vacation. So uh, I met him a week ago. And obviously I've been going for a while, but I'm proud to see that we got young black men in Whiteville, North Carolina that's actually business owners and not just working for themselves. Uh, it's a great day, it's a great time for uh, whether you're a barber or whatever it is. Uh, white girls is trying to grow a little bit. So, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm happy to uh, come over and see some positive things going on.